as I mentioned at the end of the last part of this lecture, you have actually seen the declarative approach before. In fact, most procedural process mining tools, including Opromor, have a declarative component, and that component is filters. A filter is basically a declarative rule about the process, and the filter types are basically pre-prepared templates for these rules. So for example, retain all cases that contain activity X, where X is defined while creating the filter. A trace can match a filter or a rule regardless of what occurs in the unrelated parts of the trace. So for example, retain all cases that contain activity ER registration leaves all other activities open, just as in the declarative approach. Let's take some examples. ER registration must occur. Note that here I'm using existence for simplicity. So this is how we represented it in the previous part of the lecture. Well, the corresponding filter is simply attribute retain cases based on the activity name ER registration. And the filter comes out to retain all cases that contain activity ER registration. Or ER triage occurs immediately after ER registration. Well, this is how we represented it before. In terms of filters, it's a simple path filter retaining all cases where there is a directly follows relation from ER registration to ER sepsis triage. And the full filter would read, retain all cases that contain the directly follows relation, ER registration, ER triage between activity nodes. Or if ER sepsis triage occurs, then it is eventually followed by leukocytes. This is how we represented it before. And again, it's a simple path filter retaining the cases. However, this time we use eventually follows instead of directly follows, which gives us retain all cases that contains the eventually follows relation, ER triage, ER registration. However, there are some caveats here. Let's take if admission NC occurs, then CRP also occurs and vice versa. Now you can, in Opromor, do both of those activities exist or neither exist, but you can't really combine these nicely. And this relation can actually be tricky to insert into procedural models as well. For example, consider that you already have a full process model containing those two activities, but what if these activities are on different parallel branches of the BPMN model? Or what if one of those activities is at the very beginning of the process and the second one is at the very end? Then you would suddenly have to have some kind of construction with arcs from the beginning of the process to the very end of the process, bypassing everything else in the middle. Or you would have to insert artificial decision points into the process. So in general, when we think about rules, then we can actually say, or we, one could argue that the set of rules can be considered a process model or a set of filters can be considered a process model. It is going to define a process at least partially. So for example, existence ER registration immediately followed by ER triage and ER sepsis triage eventually followed by leukocytes. Well, this comes out as being just three filters in combination. And you can easily argue that this is a definition of a process, quite a loose definition, but still a definition of a process of its own. But remember, we use this here mainly as an analogy. There is significant overlap and many similarities, but 
Filtering is not intended for describing a business process. It is intended for filtering. Furthermore, a small note on conformance checking. In previous lectures, we have shown how filters can be used as a way of checking process conformance towards or with respect to some specific process rules. So for example, ER triage must occur exactly once. Well, if your process model is a set of declarative rules that are similar to filters, but not quite the same, then conformance checking will come more naturally. Basically, each declarative rule can be checked individually and automatically, and violations can be precisely pinpointed to specific events. And that is one of the main advantages of the declarative approach, in addition to allowing process flexibility. And now, in the next part of this lecture, we are going to introduce one of the declarative process modeling languages, which is called Declare.